gentlemen, my next guest tonight is a journalist and former co-host of the Today Show. She now hosts her own talk show. Please welcome Tamron Hall. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. I don't think we've met before. I think I've just watched you on TV so much. We've not met. We've been in a couple of the same rooms, and I would always like lurk around, terrified mm -hmm. to say hello. And now I'm here. I don't bite. I know. Hi. Hi. I feel creepy now, right? <laughs> well, you not only you've you've uh, you've done something very ambitious. You not only have uh, a new a new talk show. Yeah. You have uh, a new husband. And yeah. A new baby. Yeah. So new job, new marriage, yeah. new child. Those are like some of the three Why big stress here and not vectors. In bed? Exactly. I need to be in bed. <laughs> you just decided to all clump it together at once. How are you handling the stress? You know what? Everything. It's everything is so massive that I don't know which makes me exhausted. So I look at the baby and I can't say, you've sucked the life from me, child. <laughs> because then I go to work at five in the morning and there's a talk show with my name on it and I'm like, is that the reason I'm so stressed? I don't know. <laughs> and then I look at my new husband and I'm like, who are you, dude? I, <laughs> so it's all He's the one who's built to take it. Oh, man. You can't is. do it on the show because you got to stay committed to the show. Yeah. The baby won't understand the guilt until it's older. What so, age? Uh, four. Four? Four. So, okay, so I have four years of no guilt. And then after that, no, I blame plenty you. Plenty of guilt. You just can't give it to the baby until oh, okay. he or she can understand what's going on. It's a he. His name is Moses. And uh, I know. Oh, wow. but I, yeah, I set the standard high for him. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Or he should stay away from baskets near reeds. Oh, yeah. yeah there you go. <laughs> Out you go. <laughs> Good luck with the Pharaoh, buddy. <laughs> now, this Monday, Eric, it was the first time you ever interviewed Oprah Winfrey. Yes. I've done that. That can be a little intimidating because you wanted to be special. It's Oprah. She's well, one of the wanna, great interviewers herself. I think you want to appear smart, like with you. You know, I kept looking at notes all day. What am I going to say to Stephen? How am I funny? With Oprah, you, you think, okay, I'm in the presence of a prophet. <laughs> My son's name is Moses. So I've got some things on my side. But, oh, I met her when I was 26 years old in Chicago. I was a local news reporter. Okay, and she sure. was, by then, Oprah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she invited me to this party, uh, the launch of her own magazine. So that was my closest real interaction. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know, I guess it was Saturday, I got this invitation to interview her. And I had about four days of pure anxiety. Like nervousness, dry mouth, you name it, I had it. Well, this is, is this, is this that party? This, okay, this is the great, okay, this picture, I was, like I said, 26, 27 years old. I get this invitation, we are inviting you to the launch of the Oprah Winfrey magazine. And I'm from a small town, Luling, Texas. My grandfather had a sharecropper, second grade education. I'm thinking, Oprah inviting me, this is a mix up. They don't mean Tamron Hall, they mean Pamela Hall. Wait, wait, wait. So I examine, I, okay, I don't care if this invitation was sent by mistake, I'm still going. Um, and back then we had those crank Kodak cameras, you know, sure, the ones sure. that... Yeah, so the disposable, yeah, yeah, not the selfie things we have now. Right. I'm 49, so this was in my generation, as they say. So here we go. I went with my girlfriend, and I said, we're going to go, and we have one chance to get a picture with Oprah. I need you to be prepared. I need you to stand ready, because if you get this wrong, you won't go home. Your family won't find you. It'll be bad for you. So we crank it, and I said, because we get one chance. So you got to crank it. You're locked and loaded. Um, I'm 26. I, I didn't have any money, and I got seduced by Oprah's um, food spread. When I came in, there were like shrimp the, as big as both of us. I'm like, of course Oprah has the biggest shrimp. And there's a salad bar, and there's meat, and free drinks, and it's Oprah's party. And Oprah's nowhere to be found. So I said, let's go, let's load up on food. And then when Oprah comes out, you know, we'll meet her and greet her. I had a big plate. My friend Kanye had a big plate. Her, the camera was under her arm. I'm holding, and all of a sudden, this is a true story. Tap, tap. Hi, Tamron. It's Oprah. I had just taken a bite of shrimp. I dropped the plate. This is the photo. I'm like, go! And that was the picture! Now, let me ask you something about... Uh, 
you you've been working in TV since the since the 1990s sometime yeah. in there. How did you first get on camera? Like what was your what was your break? Okay, my first big break came. I was I went to Temple University and I just threw Oh, shout out Philadelphia. Sure. Uh, I met uh, Burt Watson, who happened to be the manager for Joe Frazier, the Smoke legendary Smoking Joe. Smoke and Joe. Joe. Random occurrence. And I said, listen, you know, they tell you, don't give away your shot when the door opens, kick it in. So I thought, okay, here's my shot. I'm, I want to be a journalist. I want to go. I know some people who know some people, because that's how people in Philly talk. I know somebody who knows somebody. And I was like, okay, Philly. And they helped me get my first TV job as a camera operator. So they said, you're going to operate cameras outside. Yeah. Um, you're going to cover sports. And I'm from Texas, as I keep saying, it's, I don't know, 3,000 below zero in Philadelphia. I've never felt cold like this. So my hands would be so cold and they'd say, camera two, take camera two. And I was like, I don't know who camera two is, but my hands are in my pocket. <laughs> and so they said, you're terrible at this. Well, we can't fire you because you're Joe Frazier's friend. I'm like, great, what else you got? So then I fail into, <laughs> and by now I know my power. You know, and I said, okay, well, you can't fire me. What else do you have? And they said, we'll put you on the sidelines and you'll report. And I thought, now we're talking. And I covered uh, lacrosse, field hockey, soccer. None of these sports exist in Texas, but I learned them in Philadelphia. <laughs> and I became a sports correspondent, and that was my start. Um, well, <laughs> congratulations on the new show. Thank you. Check your local listings to see when Tamron Hall airs in your city. Tamron Hall, everybody. We'll be right back with a performance.